Hearing. It's one of our most important and astounding senses. Hearing in animals is particularly important for survival and reproduction, and each species has a range of normal hearing for both amplitude and frequency. Our local deer populations, who also have amazing hearing, have been moving westward on Long Island recently. Deer are fright animals, meaning that they're easily spooked and their ears are constantly scanning the landscape for anything that might mean danger. These ear movements can be seen in another familiar animal though, and that's the horse. Join me in this episode as we explore our sense of hearing, meet some horses who rely on their hearing to keep us safe, learn about how bats use their supersonic hearing, and learn how to build a bat house right here on Off the Trail. Sergeant Roditas has been with the Nassau County Mounted Police for 29 and a half years. His horse, DJ, has been his trusty companion for 10 years. So let's say you, Eric, want to come to the Mountain Unit. Mm -hmm. You come, you write a letter, you interview. The training will last months. At the end of your training, you should be able to walk, trot, canter, gallop. You will jump. You will jump without irons. You will jump with your eyes closed. You will jump with no hands. Wow. Okay? And the for that, you need a lot of personal time with the horse so that you, Absolutely. you bond with them. In the wild, the horse knows fight or flight. He knows if there's a predator or something that's going to frighten him, he knows flight. He's going to run away from it. So we're teaching him the complete opposite. We want him to go towards the threat as opposed to running away from it. And it takes a lot of work. We have to make sure that he's not afraid of loud noises. Okay, so we're going to do things like we're going to shoot blanks around him out of a gun. We're gonna do fireworks around him. Mm. We're also gonna make, take him out into the elements so he's gonna see cars, trucks. Mm -hmm. But through repetition, every time he does it, he starts to trust you, I start to trust him. Let me ask you this, what, because um, horses come with a, a whole tool of, of senses, you know, right. uh, and they have great vision and wonderful hearing. What advantage does that give you as a, as a police officer out on patrol being on a horse? The beauty of, uh, his hearing, first of all, which is much better than ours, um, his eyesight and his sense of smell are all very, very cute. Again, because in the wild, he can't have something come sneaking up on him that could hurt him. So he's, he's very alert as to what's going on. The first time when I was new, when I took the horse over by a railroad station, you know, you have the overhead train coming in, uh -huh. all of a sudden his ears go straight up. And I'm like, what does he hear? What's going on? And the next thing you'll see is their head will do this. And you're trying to look, and this train, I'm not kidding, it was down the tracks, around the bend. I couldn't even see it, and he knew it was coming. So that's, uh, it's, it's really um, an impressive use of an animal and their animal senses to be with you on patrol. Absolutely. Now, DJ here, while we've been talking, I've been noticing that his ears have been flipping and flopping all back and forth. They go forwards, um, they go to the side, they can even move independently of each other and listen forwards and backwards simultaneously. Yes, they can. And, uh, and these ears are basically mini um, satellite dishes just collecting that sound and channeling it right into his uh, ear canals and uh, processed by his brain there. So he's able to input all these senses together to tell him what sort of danger could be around. So I just wanted to see some of, um, some of DJ's uh, reactions to sound and things like that and, um, and watch those ears, um, you know, scanning around the, the surrounding environment here. The pickup truck yeah. will be what's going to be making your noises for us right now. So we're going to do a sound we're and, do a and sound. a light uh, right. test. I just want to show you that his eyes are actually every bit as good as his ears are. Okay, so Frank's out on patrol. He's walking along. There's some police activity over there. The horse might pick on a, up on it before Frank does. If he reacts, what you'll see is he'll, he'll fix on it with his eyes, and then his ears actually should do the same, because he's gonna wanna know, besides seeing it, if it sounds like it's gonna be a threat. What's going on over there, buddy? There you go, okay. Oh, yeah, there he is. Uh... Okay, so he's, 
just picked up And on he's that. not overly threatened by it, so he's not going to really do anything. He's going to look at it and go, okay, I've seen that before. Seen it's that. not going to hurt me. I'm okay. All right. So his ears basically went back to now. Again, one's going in that direction, one's going in this direction. Let, right. Let's see if anything else is going on. And as you can see, he's probably one of our best trained police horses. Yeah, I think scared. so. Put the siren on. That got his attention. Okay, it's not really bugging him. All right, there's a couple so, of elements as to why we would use a horse for patrol. First of all, we do have Frank's head is probably about nine feet in the air, which gives him a great vantage point. The other uh, advantage for us is in a crowd control situation, the horse can actually walk sideways. We call it a side pass. And what he'll do is he'll move a crowd this way. You're not gonna wanna stand there. He's 1,200 pounds. And also you don't want him to step on your feet, obviously, okay? but it eliminates that close contact. When Frank's adrenaline starts to flow, so does the horse, believe it or not. He will pump and you can actually feel him through your boots. You'll feel a reaction wow. from him that's to something going on. Okay. And I guess you could probably go in a lot of places that a vehicle couldn't. But that's a patrol unit. We do everything that a cop does in a car or on foot, but we do it on horseback. Horses truly use their hearing to watch for predators and listen to different commands. But they aren't the only animals with a keen sense of hearing. Hidden among our local greenery are other small creatures with very specialized hearing. Rabbits use their large upright ears to hear, and when alert, the ears move forward and backward as they attempt to pinpoint the danger. Bats also survey their surroundings by using ultrasound while in flight. Ultrasounds are sound waves with frequencies higher than the upper audible limit of human hearing, which is about 20 kilohertz. Another fascinating aspect of our local bats is that they prey on mosquitoes and are a natural way of controlling insect populations. One way you can prevent mosquitoes around your house this summer is by building a bat house. Building a bat house is so easy and uh, this is an example of, uh, of a great design, but this is another one I really enjoy. And the basics of a, of a bat house this big is you want two pieces that are bigger and two pieces that are smaller. And the way these fit together is really easy. You just get some other small scraps of wood that like these. So you wanna know how wide across your boards are to make one of these. And then the other two are actually gonna be shorter. Now, if you're wondering how all of this fits together, you wanna start with your two bigger ones. And this is where an old screwdriver or nail or something like that comes in handy. And you wanna use this edge and scratch up the inside of the wood. And what you're doing is giving the bats a place to hang on. Those little feet can hold on to the smallest little uh, scratches in the wood. Now we need these smaller inserts. This one here goes across the top and it goes from edge to edge. And these two smaller ones are gonna be your border on the sides. You wanna leave just a small little gap between them. So I'll put the screwdriver in there just so it fits in. And now just some good old deck screws and a drill. You'll need these two boards to go right over the top of those. And we have ourselves a nice bat house that can be hung wherever we need to. Um, this is a nice wide bat house and could probably support a population of about maybe 100 bats inside this. All right, so as you see here with the, um, with the bat house, I use this webbing here. You don't have to use the webbing. I just had it laying around. You could just uh, scratch, uh, scratch up the wood. But what this does is provides a landing platform for the bats. You gotta remember, they're flying in and they need a spot to land on and gra easily grab onto it before they climb up inside the bat box. So there we are, now we just need to place it because this is just half of it. Placement is the other half. And without proper placement, you're not gonna get any bats living in even the best built bat house. 
we painted this one, uh, actually we didn't paint it, we uh, stained it black, and we want it on a nice southern exposure. So you've, you've opened up a spot here on the side of this uh, cottonwood tree uh, for us to put that up there, so that's perfect. And we have some lag bolts here to put these in. Now when you put these in, um, you just want to be careful not to um, tighten this right up against the tree. Okay. You want to leave a little space there to allow room for the tree to grow. Otherwise it'll just push it right off the tree okay. um, in a short order of time. So we'll go ahead and put that up then and uh, hopefully we'll get some nice good bats right. in here. So now we've just placed it up here on the side of the tree and uh, the first lag bolt is going in right now. So the lag bolts go in top and bottom and you only want two points of contact there um, against the tree. And we have a good spot now for some bats. If you follow all these steps, you should have no problem having bats frequent your box. One woman who's helping to control the local mosquito population through initiatives like this is the town of North Hempstead supervisor, Judy Bosworth. We love to, to walk and not be bothered by mosquitoes, but we know that you know as we get into the season, we see a lot of mosquitoes, and so my understanding is that the bats are really wonderful natural ways of combating the mosquito population. Exactly, and these little bats, very small, but very efficient at eating flying insects, and uh, they would come out just at dusk and dawn at those, uh, as a biologist, we'd say those crepuscular hours. Love that word. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, they're eating up all these, uh, these flying insects, and of course, mosquitoes would fall into that zone. So let me ask you something, because I read that one bat can eat a thousand mosquitoes in an hour. Is it's, that a typo or is that like that's really true. true? Yeah, that's true. Wow. So if there if there's a ton of bugs flying around and they don't have to fly far between them, they can really munch them down. You know, one of the things that we're concerned with as we're you know coming into the summer season is so many of the um, diseases that are affiliated with mosquitoes, whether it's West Nile or the Zika virus. Um, so it's very comforting to know that these bats actually do a lot to control the insect population, but in a natural way without using chemical poisons. That's right. And something I've been uh, learning a lot about lately is our history here on Long Island with chemicals specifically designed to kill mosquitoes, but then having disastrous effects with the wildlife. And it all started off with DDT here, right. um, trying to kill off mosquitoes with DDT. And of course we know uh, the songbirds were dying out, the uh, osprey were laying thin egg-shelled eggs. You know, the thing that is so important that is having bats here, controlling the insect population um, is so important. And I know we have some bat houses at Clark Gardens, so right. it's very exciting to see that our Hempstead Harbor Trail is now going to be the proud receiver of a, of a bat house. So, spring is here, and it's time for me to head off the trail in search of some more nature. If you want to see some wild deer, rabbits, or bats for yourself, then you'll want to hit the trails too. Some of my favorite local parks are Sands Point Preserve, Clark Botanic Garden, and Whitney Pond Park, which can be seen at this website right here. Also, remember to check out mynhtv.com, and you can visit me at yc2n.com. Until next time, I'm Ranger Eric, and I'll see you off the trail.